Hey, what is up you guys? Crash and Crush here back with another video and today I'm going to be going over you guys uh, the rebuild process or the re-rebuild process I should say of the Craftsman Crusher. So here he is um, and as you know in my previous videos I said I was going to do a full rebuild on this thing and that has started. Basically I've been even though I built it uh, Oppie uh, 19 and a half a post twin Peerless 820 um, with bigger tires focus damn camera there we go um i had bigger tires in the front custom front axle um some frame braces but i was still having frame flex issues uh still having belt slippage issues the engine still runs bad and just in general the first time this was built some stuff was half-assed which i don't want to do that again the rebuild time so i have been doing some stuff off camera and i will show you guys that and uh Maybe um, I'll do some engine tear down in this video. So one of the first things that you will notice is in the front. Uh, so basically on these Craftsman frames, this front part just hangs down and it's not connected to anything other than this part right here. So it's pretty weak and easy to pull on. It actually was starting to come out from using this as a toe point, this D-ring. So what I did is uh, I bent it back the best that I could. And I welded it solid on both sides. You will also notice in the back here, I added a cross member here for the back of the frame to help with tranny flex. Um, it's just, um, I don't remember what how the thickness of the steel is. I think it was quarter inch from left to right, but as you can see, it doesn't interfere with any of the um, threaded holes or the backing plates, so the backing plate can still go on here. These tranny mounts got to go. They're completely, completely and utterly destroyed. Um, but yeah, that should help. I might add a couple more just because, you know, we're, re we're rebuilding it. Might as well make it good, right? Um, the engine, once, uh, after I rolled it over, I took it to my cousin's house. Uh, ever since in the carb, it's not been running right because oil got pumped into it. So I made a fix for that. I added a catch can, which if I could sneak the camera in here. You can see behind the gas tank up and out of the way, and I use fuel lines and zip ties. Um, it came with this weird line. I only used portions of that to connect it. Um, and that helped, but the end, the carb is still running like crap, so I'm going to get a new carburetor. Um, even though the three-bolt Oppie carb uh, fuel pump, the three-bolt fuel pump carburetors, that's a mouthful, for the Oppies are better than the four-bolt. I've been having no luck finding a brand new 3-bolt, so I'm just going to buy a 4-bolt and run it for now. Um, and Yeah, this thing, it has not been running in about probably mm, probably two months now, as I started tearing it apart. Um, and uh, as you know, these stock Craftsman front ends are never good at all, so I swapped in a cast iron front end, which this helped add weight to the front. But as you notice... It looks like the axle is bent. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you on the camera can pick this up, but the axle may be bent, which I highly doubt because it's cast iron. What I think it actually is, is where the axle mount is, the actual mounting part itself is twisted back. That is what I'm thinking, that is what I'm hoping, but worst case scenario, I got a spare front end over there that I can brace up. Another thing that is very weak on these Craftsman's is, that is stock obviously, is the tie rods. So, I mean, these two things I did a while ago, but I'm covering them now. Um, this is just a stock uh, Craftsman tie rod with a piece of angle steel welded on the top because I kept bending them and it works really well. I have not bent, it hasn't bent at all. Um, and it's been smashed, it's been do a lot of abuse. But another weak, really weak point on these Craftsman's is stock, obviously, is the spindles. Even if you run small tires, I'm gonna see if I can try to I don't know if you can tell, but it, these things bend this way, and they the whole spindle itself will twist this way, so your tires will be off-centered, and basically, they're, they're just crap. So what I did is, on these spare ones, let me go show you. So I took these spare ones, and what I did is, I don't remember the thickness of this um, steel, but it's round stock. I cut it to length, and I used the bench, bench grinder right there. Let's see if I can zoom in. That thing worked great. And I sanded it down. Um, not sanded. I wire wheeled it down so I could weld to it. And I took the square steel. I rounded it off, formed it, 
to fit from here to here and welded it on there I made sure it was as straight as possible it's not perfect 100% but it'll hold and another thing is this is what I don't get about this is one of these things that craftsmen and their flaws and stuff that I don't get so some of these LT1000 spindle stock have the um, have a steering stop in there some of them like on this one don't it had the hole for it but it didn't have a steering stop in there which I mean that was a simple fix I just took a bolt and I welded it in there but like I just don't just don't understand that but hopefully these new spindles will um, not bend uh, these ones I'm gonna keep in there for as long as they have since they're already a little bit a be little bit bent so might as well beat the crap out of them before putting the new ones in there um, Another thing that has to be done is it need, we need a few more frame braces, obviously. Um, but another thing that I really, really want to do is add electric start. Because even though the pole start was a good idea to start, um, to use as a starter, it's it, it, it sucks after a while. Especially as you saw at TTC, it really affected your time and just it was a pain in the ass. So that is going to go. The pulley is still going to stay on there as an emergency. I actually put a brand new oppie starter on there to use but the electrical didn't work i couldn't get the electrical to work so i kind of just threw it on hold uh, and just kept using the pole start but now that uh this tractor set aside to be fully rebuilt that's the issue i'm going to address um i'm also i'm not 100 percent sure on this but i really am thinking about getting rid of the hood lift kit it does look cool but if you have to get to the engine quickly uh it's it's more annoying and plus if you have to pull start it, it's more annoying because you have to undo them wiggle it off and if you break a hood like this one is pretty well damaged from rollovers and yeah it's sustained some pretty pretty rough damage from rollovers just as you see the whole front of it is all cracked out and up here it's all pushed out and not straight it's all buffed out over here um so I'm thinking about doing that because it's very easy to just throw another hood on and go. Even if once I get more sun off tires, if I have to cut a section of the hood off, so be it. Um, and an another thing that I want to do is even though I did stock brakes on this, it, di it didn't last long at all. Um, stock brakes on these transmissions aren't meant to be going the speeds that we're going. So it didn't really do so well. But what I'm thinking about doing is... Let me go let me go to an 820 really quick and I'll show you what I mean. So right here we have a Peerless 820. This was a five speed, but I put six speed gears in it. As you see, it has the EC carburetors hub. Um, this is not the one I'm gonna run in the Craftsman Crusher, just because I want to test this out. This is another was five speed but has six speed gears, 820. Um, this has the extra spider gear locking method. I've never run one of these before and I really want to try it. So this is what I'm gonna run. And then have this one as a spare. But basically, this isn't what we're going to pay attention to. What we're going to pay attention to is, as you see, the way the stock brake system works is you have a brake disc here and you have splines. You can see the tips of them. And then it slides on like this. And then basically, the way it works, it presses and it pushes the pad against it, which when this is spinning, it's connected. Basically, what I'm going to do is use the stock disc on the splines. I'm going to slide it on like that. I'm going to buy like a uh, brake caliper. I'm going to find a way to mount it and I'm going to run a cable through it and when you pull on the cable or pedal or whatever it is it's, it'll pinch on this. So basically you'll have semi like four-wheeler disc brakes but you don't have to worry about having space on the axle or having to worry about wheel spacers because you're using the stock setup just making a mount and making it work. And what I'm thinking about doing is running the cable and connecting it to the old rays or the old um, arm that engaged the motor disc. Because the thing that I like about this is if I can try to sneak the camera in here, it has... I'm going to try to get this. Kind of can't. Well, you kind of sent right there. Right at the... Uh, yeah, you can't get it. But basically... Oh, I can get it right here. You can see if the camera will focus. It's right there on that flat spot is where a cable will come through normally. And then obviously you'd come up and it'd pull on that. So if I route it from 
right about there up underneath and connects to this as I'm driving I need to brake push it up on it and it got brakes I'm in depending on how where my knee is gonna be if it's gonna hit it I can cut it section off move it closer weld it on but brakes are a really must want um, another thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to when I hook up in the new foot throttle I'm going to be ungoverning this thing completely just gonna completely bypass the governor linkage see if I can get in there right there that linkage right there at the tip of my finger if that's the governor linkage it's gonna be completely bypassed so I can have so I'm able to hold this thing wide open and have more power and more speed um, I'm going to be running the 5 to a 6 pulley swap, but I'm not going to run the ROMS gears because I'm doing a test. And I will explain that test a little bit more later if it works. Basically like a little experiment. But yeah, basically I covered all the things that I'm going to be doing this thing as of right now. Um, there might be other stuff coming uh, in the near future. Oh, well, after like this is done, the main stuff. Just like chipping away a little stuff here and there. Um... But this is the big, big stuff that I wanted to cover that I am going to be starting to work on. Um, so, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and tell me down in the comments what you think of what the new Craftsman Crusher is going to be. Are you excited for him to be back? What else do you think I should do to it? Um, but, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.